Hello, and welcome to Not Your Mom's Review Show. I'm Cher. And I'm Nikki. We talk about movies, TV shows, and a bunch of other random shit. Most of the time, it's relevant. Sometimes, not so much. But it's always amusing. Enjoy! Enjoy! Oh my god! What did it do? I don't know! Oh, it's Cancel. trying to add something. Yeah. Cancel. God damn it! Okay, well, I guess we can fill some time. Let me get the movie <laughs> back up. I should say we are recording this in late ish. No, it's late June. Late June, yeah. Okay, it's 20 so. something. Yeah. 26? So we're, we're still full into quarantine mode, except for Nikki's been forced to get back to work. I still have until. Yeah. Until, uh, what do you call it? <clears throat> August. Yeah. Essential. <clears throat> so these, we probably aren't going to publish, start publishing, uh, publishing again until August. Uh, but we do have the plan-ish Yeah. of recording some shit, so yes. So we should at least be in a position where we can start recording at least, I mean, publishing at least semi-regularly again. Yeah. Um... But yeah, things are not great. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> Let's see, what's currently happening? Just so we have, because who knows what's going oh, yeah, happen tomorrow. We We've got... Uh, Everybody's getting reinfected because yeah. everyone decided that COVID's not happening anymore. Everybody protested, which is... Oh, it's right thing. there. I know, I see it. Okay. I'm going. I'm just saying. Oh, that's the first one. Oh, there's the second one. Oh, so it's not what's his face. Uh, yeah, we'll get into that. Okay. Oh, okay. There we go. Okay, it's playing now. Wait, but... Uh, but if your computer, I mean, if your TV doesn't shut down, we'll be okay. All right. It looks I like was it's fine. pissed. I don't know what I was doing. Weird. Oh, I don't know where the volume's at. Oh, yeah. It's good. So this uh, movie was made in 2003. Did we even say what movie we were doing? We're doing George of the Jungle 2. It someone, was requested. Yeah, someone on YouTube requested it. Um, George of the Jungle came out in 1997, so this one is six years later. Okay. Um, or is it like, call? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love subtitles. <laughs> Uh, but this movie, so this movie also picks up six years after we left George and Ursula, so okay. it, you know, the time is the same. Um, in their jungle tree house, staring adoringly at their new baby boy. That's where we left things. Okay. And we're picking up six years later. So, um, things look a little different. Uh, mm. we have a new George. Yeah. Played by Christopher Showerman instead of Brendan Fraser. And a new Ursula, played by Julie Benz, instead of Leslie Mann. Uh, Christina Pickles plays Ursula's mom instead of Colin Taylor. Uh, oh. We still have some of the original cast, though. Uh, John Cleese still voices Ape, and Thomas Hayden Church still plays the villainous Lyle. Mm. Uh, Brendan Fraser turned down this movie because he was already committed to work on <laughs> Looney Tunes back in action. Oh. I think he made the wrong choice, yeah. personally. <laughs> but, you know, he didn't yeah, know that at the time. Yeah. It was poor he, Brandon Fraser. He's well, made a lot of wrong choices. I, poor thing. It was supposed to be a sequel to Space Jam, but things kind of got skewed. So yeah. I could see how he would have thought that that would be a better choice because yeah. Space Jam was so popular. Um, yeah. Now George of the Jungle Two was a direct to video release, and most people hated it. <laughs> uh, I think the recasting was a mistake. Uh, yeah. Most of the charm of the first movie was all due to Brandon Fraser, honestly. Yeah. Um, the rest of the charm is due to the tongue-in-cheek, fourth-wall-breaking narration. Uh, it's the kind of silliness I live for. Yeah. Um, that is one woman's opinion, of course. Uh, <laughs> that charm remains, at least, the <clears throat> narration. Um, the narrator acknowledges that it's a different George, but assures us that he can take a tree as well as the original. Mm. Humph, I say. Humph. Humph. Bah humbug. Uh, the plot feels like it's been recast as well. Um just watching this little cartoon intro because it's cute. Uh, evil Lyle is still trying to woo Ursula back, and Ursula's mom is helping him. Oh. Their goals are aligned, but they're not quite the same. Lyle wants to wreck George and claim Ursula as a spoil of war, mm -hmm. and Beatrice, the mom, just wants to get Ursula away from George and the jungle. Yeah. Uh, they've stolen the deed to Ape Mountain. Uh, it seems ridiculous to me that this remote African mountain would be deeded in the first place. Yeah. But I've suspended my disbelief for less. <laughs> Oof. Uh, back in the jungle, George is once again struggling with his emotions, but instead of loneliness this time, he's very stressed out by his duties as a father, provider, king of the jungle. Cry me a river, you big baby. <laughs> Man up. Mm. 
Oh, that's horrible <laughs> CGI. Yep. Oh, that is awful CGI. Uh-huh. Lyle and Beatrice invite George and Ursula to Vegas. Remember, when we left off, Ape had become a successful showman in Vegas. Uh-huh. Uh, and commence their evil plan. Beatrice goes to great lengths to make Ursula see things her way by commissioning Ursula's rich friends and even going so far as to have her hypnotized to believe she'd married Lyle instead. Wow. Uh, meanwhile, He has Lyle, really pretty eyes. Yeah. Uh, Lyle has leveraged Ape's gambling debt to get him to help distract George while he steals the deed. Mm. Uh, he then sends his goons to fuck off to Ape Mountain to begin bulldozing because that's what villains in movies do. Do. Especially in the 90s. Uh, eventually, George figures out Lyle's evil plan, and failing to convince her that they're married, he knocks Ursula unconscious and ships them all back to Africa. You'll remember this is how George got back home in the first movie as well. Uh. Uh, he even thanks Brendan Fraser's George for the tip on how cramped it was and got a bigger crate this time. Mm. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Uh, all ends well as George defeats Lyle and his evil goons, and Ape even manages to steal a kiss from Beatrice again. See how the plot kind of feels the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, they renew their vows, much like the end of the first movie where they got married. Yeah. Um, and figure out how to manage George's stress. End credits. End credits. It's a cute little movie, but like never one I'm just randomly craving. But it's a gateway to talk about sequels! Sequels! Everyone talks smack about sequels, but I'm always game. I I'm always excited for them. Yeah. Mm. Let's start with some universally acknowledged good sequels. Okay, okay. So there's X2, X-Men United. Love Fuck it. yes, love I love it. this movie. It was badass, but I also feel like it's cheating to call it a sequel since it's part of a cinematic universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we didn't know that at the time. <laughs> it was that. a sequel. Nightcrawler is in my top three favorite X-Mans. Ooh, what's your top? Well, you want to know who else? Yeah, well, you want to? You want to? Sounds wanna? a little scripted. Okay. But okay. <laughs> you bitch. <laughs> I just fell right into it. Um, there's Okay, so there's Nightcrawler, as I just said, because mm-hmm. he's the king of ghosting, for one. Poof. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Um, also, he's a lighthearted jokester masking some serious internal struggles due to mm. being very Catholic and also looking very much like a demon. Yeah. So. Yes, yeah, so much like a demon. Oh my god, I remember like that movie where he's just like, poof, punch, 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 poof, punch, 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 crawl up the wall, punch, 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 poof, punch, punch. And you're like, I want to do that. Backflip, punchy, punchy, punch, punch. And then he just poofs out. And you're like, yes! <laughs> I wanted to do that so bad. That so would be bad. like the epic ghosting out. Um, okay, so there's also Wolverine. Uh huh. I know this is common and a very popular one, but I like the comic book version more than the movie depictions. Yeah. I think that's why I liked Logan, the movie, so much. Yeah. Because he seems like the true Wolverine in that movie, an asshole. Yeah. (laughs) He's a surly loner who's supposed to be short and hairy and very musky. Yeah. And that is not... What's his face? Uh... That guy. You're you're better at this than I am. Uh, you always remember their names. He, he, Jackman. Yeah, he Jackman. He Jackman. No, 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 no. <laughs> we did it. Now you know I love an antihero. Um, mm. He emerged in the comic books at the height of the Vietnam War angst, mm. uh, which included a lot of feelings about being obligated to do horrific things for a morally questionable greater good. Yeah. It is a lot of fertile ground for a you know very um, complex character yeah. background. <clears throat> Uh, and I'll wrap it up with Gambit, mm-hmm. another anti-hero. Apparently what I love most in life is assholes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm the same way. I got you there. Yeah. He makes jokes, he has to work in the past, and he refuses to live up to his full potential. Perfection. Perfection. All right, I got super distracted. Okay. Okay. We'll carry on with talking about sequels. Okay, there's also, and I feel like you could fill in some gaps on this one, Adam's Family Values. Okay, so... <laughs> okay. So the Addams Family movies are some of my favorite fucking oh. movies of all time. I am aware. There are a lot of good things yeah. about Addams Family Values. Yes. I agree. And it was it's amazing. Uh-huh. Yeah. But the house was cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that gets me every oh, wait, wait, time. Wait, 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 wait. He's swinging on vines. Hold on. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Oh. My fucking throat. Mm. Allergies are going abundant. There he goes. Okay. I just wanted to see that. Okay. Well, this is a, it's a great example, kind of like what Shrek did as well, of leaning into the characters and just making everything more like itself, yeah. it felt like. Yeah. Um, there are not too many movies that can get away with older siblings plotting to kill the family's new baby. Yeah. <laughs> not to mention Wednesday taking no bullshit when she turns a Thanksgiving play into a devastating history So lesson. that is my favorite part. <laughs> Fucking Wednesday in the second one. Oh my God, at the camp where mm-hmm. the girl, they're like... 
about to go swimming or something like that, and they're like, oh, no, we're going to do um, lifeguard things or whatever. And the, the little blonde girl's like, I'll be the victim. And Wednesday's like, all your life. I was like, <laughs> savage. <laughs> so amazing. Oh, my God. It is the most savage, beautiful thing ever. I rewind it and watch it at least three times. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, God. Okay, burps. Mm. Okay, there's also... Uh, Star Trek 2, The Wrath of Khan. Mm. Uh, this one also feels like a cheat because Star Trek the motion picture was a cold, stiff mess. That I will still defend <laughs> until my dying day. Amen. Um, but The Wrath of Khan's plot felt much more Star Trek-y and Ricardo, Mon- Ricardo Montalban made a fantastic villain. Oh. Iconic. Oh. I mean, if you bring up that movie, all anyone can do is go, Khan! Right? And he's just so... <laughs> good like he's just so he's so good because he took mm. it seriously even though it's a really silly universe if you try to think about it too long like it's all ridiculous but he took the role seriously yeah and i think that's what makes a huge difference a lot of the time is you know really it could have committing. easily been made ridiculous yeah it could yeah. easily have been the wrong actor could have made it yeah just too over the top but he was in it like he was he in. was con. And he did a great job. Amazing. And, like, that's the thing. Like, a lot of the stuff with Star Trek, I think that's why the, the the casting is so important is because all of it's fucking ridiculous. Like, all of it. It's all stupid. It. Like, mm-hmm. But they, they, they put themselves into it so much, all of them, the cast, the directors, everybody, to make you kind of get the bigger picture, the bigger yeah. message they're trying to get across. Like, don't worry about the details so much. Like, that's for entertainment and to move the plot along. But, like, what we're really trying to say is what's important here. And I was worried with the new the new Star Treks, like, the, um, who was playing Khan. Like, when they showed oh, who was yeah. playing Khan, I was like, the yeah. fuck? Like, I, w- I was really on the fence about it. But then watching it, he yeah. did such a fantastic, just that air of confidence, Ooh. that air of arrogance arrogance but but deserve it it's earned arrogance. arrogance yeah but he's also at the same time he's like you're all trying to kill my people yeah. and i've got this brain so i'm gonna do what i need to do yeah yeah i wasn't too worried about it because i'd already watched the bbc um sherlock series yeah and so i knew like that actor is amazing like, he is amazing really great. but i also like the the thing that i like the most about Khan, and i think that was my earliest probably my earliest encounter with a villain that I really understood mm. he was the hero of his story. Yeah. Like, he didn't think he was the villain. He thought he was doing the right thing to save right. his people. Right. And you can kind of see how easily, like, if you just flip it, yeah. and you put him in the lead role and the, you know, Kirk and the gang. And you'd the, rooting you'd, yeah, you'd be rooting for him. Yeah, rooting for him. And you're like, oh, look how smart he is. He outsmarted blah, blah, blah. Yeah. He did this. Like, you would have rooted for him. And he was fucking smart. They were a very yeah. technologically advanced race. Okay. Yeah. So this one, all right, so... Many people say that The Godfather 2 is slightly better than The Godfather. Not to say The Godfather is bad. It's mm-hmm. a great movie, but The Godfather 2 is even better. Yeah. But I have to admit to you that I've never watched these. You've never watched? No. I have, like, a, neither the- I have a really hard time with mob movies. You know how you have a problem with arrogance? Yeah. I have the same problem with mob movies. I find them to be all incredibly pretentious. Yes, pretentious. Yeah. The machismo, I hate. The women and drugs and money are just there to justify this asshole's claim to power. Yeah. I hate all of it for the same reason I hate politicians and Instagram influencers. <laughs> the audacity. I have to protect my family. Uh, but you're the one putting everyone's families in, in danger. danger just so your dick can get hard. And then, seriously, like, a lot of the mob stuff, it's, like, all about loyalty and blah, blah, uh-huh. They're backstabbing the fuck out of each other uh-huh. all the goddamn time. Like, it's, I trusted you. Yeah. Really? It's Did you? absolutely no different to me than the Kardashians. There is no <laughs> difference to me. None whatsoever. Just the budget. That's it. Oh but, like, gosh. there are some good ones. Um, like, I liked Scarface. I think yeah. I liked Carlito's Way. And I liked Heat. But that's about it. Like, I can, I generally just avoid them. Like, all the shows on TV Heat wasn't about wrong. it. Well, it's the same kind of feeling to me. Like, the cops were the same it's as like the monsters. the crime buddies mm, yeah. and the blah, blah. No. Ironically, okay. I love pirate movies. <laughs> And it's the same fucking principle. That is ironic as shit. I don't know. I think it's the dirt. Like, pirates are dirty and don't pretend not to be. While these fucking coked up gangsters put on their stupid hummingbird skin loafers and blood diamond watches. (laughs) Like, they're better than everyone else. Just because they have more guns and goons. Oh, my God. I I can't. Wait, what were the boots again? Hummingbird skin. (laughs) 
Hummingbird skin lotus. Dragonfly wing. <laughs> <laughs> the hummingbird skin share with the But the, like the pirates are like, I just want this gold. I'm gonna go buy my own island and I'm gonna live there forever. And then and I'm gonna just, like I'm gonna squander it all. I'm gonna squander it all on booze and, and women I and get, get STDs. And, oh god. I'm in it for the violence. Let's go. <laughs> Let's move on. Pet my cat. She wants love. Okay, fuck cat. Yeah. Jesus Christ. You normally want to kill me when I'm over here. All right. Ever since that thing got removed, she's been so much well, like really lovey. Yeah. Know, maybe she's thanking you for finally putting her out of her misery. No, this <laughs> I made like it last way too long. Uh, she's fine. But she's good. Okay. Now, okay. There's the Dark Knight. Mm. Now, yes, Lord. So much better than Ooh, the first one. This is all due to Heath Ledger's incredible performance mm. and a proper dark, gritty Batman trilogy in general. I've always felt like DC Comics are just dirtier. Mm-hmm. And what Christopher Nolan did was right on the money. Yeah. I'm like, uh, oh my gosh, she's nibbling you. Batmans and Supermans are a dime <clears> reason, <throat> but this is a standout in terms of tone and performance. Yeah. Heath Ledger was a very talented actor, and this Joker is a masterpiece of depth and nuance. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing bad to say about that movie. Nothing. Okay, so there, there's John Wick Chapter 2. Mm. Uh, these movies are all equally fantastic, but the dog lives in this one, so yeah, yeah that's better. That's better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay, and now this one I'm going to let you talk about. Oh, God. Hold on. <coughs> Go ahead. Aliens. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so there is a huge debate. <laughs> I was watching this trailer for the show where it's like nerds debating movies. Uh-huh. And one thing that a chick said was like, Aliens is better than Alien. We're just going to put it right there. And everyone's like, oh, and I was like, I need to watch this. Because <laughs> that, I don't know if it's just because I watched it so much as a kid. Yeah. But just, you all know, Aliens is the best fucking movie ever to me. Like, it's just, there's no part of it I don't like. Well, I watched Alien and Aliens as an adult both mm. times with you. And I mm. think that I liked, I enjoyed Aliens. It was more interesting. Yeah, it was more action. Yeah. There was more action. There was more... When she got in that badass, like, exoskeleton yeah. thing, like, that was... I, that it's was... more action-filled. Like, the, the first one, it has, you know, it's it's the origin kind of story. Yeah, it's it's like, you, you know, it, it very slowly builds, but there's, you know, amazing, iconic parts of it, but Aliens, I'm sorry, is just the best fucking movie ever, and I will stick to that till my dying day. The weirdest thing about Nikki is that the sounds of aliens are soothing to her and she falls asleep We watched to them. it so much when I was a kid, okay? <laughs> like, it's just home. Okay, yeah. so I hear a fucking alien squeal and I'm like, ah. ah. It was like, we didn't have food, but we had movies. Yeah. So it was nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we had that's what fed me so, so. I was watching um, I was telling Nikki I was watching Highlander earlier with my daughter because she hadn't seen it and I figured it was time and so like there's this one part where Kurgan is driving like all brutally mm. and he puts a fucking tape in the tape deck <laughs> and I had to pause and I was like okay Janie let me explain this to you. <laughs> back in the old days in the 1900s oh, in the 1900s <laughs> And then we spent a lot of time making fun of 80s fashion, and she was like, his hair is awful. I was like, everything is awful! The, the 80s were coat awful! The with the fucking white tennis shoes, like he's got new balances on. Yeah, yeah. Like, he looked like a soccer mom, but like a man, and he had a trench coat like a fucking pervert. And she she's trained to think of trench coats mm-hmm. as like pervert gear. And so she's like, is he that good guy? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> he actually uses the thing and closes it. The thing that goes around the waist, like he actually yeah. uses it. And I was like, there wasn't a sword in there before, Janie. No, your senses aren't fooling you. I had to explain to her oh so much. God. I had to explain to her about graphics oh, and about yeah. how like CG wasn't a thing. Like it was all like you know. These were like over layers yeah. of stuff, and like oh god. And then she. She Poor thing. Like, she was like, why do their swords do that? I'm like, because it's the magic. When they fight, there's magic. It's, it's magic the, lightning. Because magic. And there's so many times she was asking questions and I was just like, shh. Just enjoy it. Just enjoy it. Just enjoy And it's so funny when you think about, like, I never thought that McConnell? McConnell? McCloud. Uh, McCloud. Connor McCloud. I never thought he was attractive. Like, yeah. even when I was a kid, I He's didn't. He's not. His eyes are dreamy. But, like, the the standard of male attractiveness... Yeah. It was, it was a weird... Yeah. It was, it was a weird, weird. Time. Yeah. Everybody was on cocaine. No one made the decisions. <laughs> but it was also really real. Like, it was very... Like, we were just talking about, like, the guys always took their shirts off. Yeah. But they had hair on their chest. Yeah. And they, you know, like, it was real, like... I don't know, but it was still, like, I never, 
Sometimes I watch movies and like you look at somebody's face and you're like, if just one thing was off, they would not be attractive. Yeah. Like, yeah. But there's just something about this motherfucker. Well, if he was, because <laughs> he was like, I think it was when um, Connor McLeod, Kurgan stabbed him in battle in 1536. And so then they take him back to the village and he's lying on his deathbed. And he's just like really pale and he's just like, you know, you can tell he's dying and the priest gives him his last rites and stuff. And then Janie's looking at him and she's like, his lips are really big. And I was like, they're not that big. I mean, people have different lips. It's fine. He's and just then, very pale, so and they're sticking out. And then she's like, and they're really chalky. And I was like, well, you got me there. Because <laughs> like, there's no chapstick in 1536. They didn't have any pig fat or something like that to rub you. on his lips. He was dying. But, they didn't want to waste it. Okay. But then like, whenever they would close in on his eyes, that's when I was like, yes, that's what there's it is. That. Like, his eyes are beautiful. Like He has very beautiful eyes. But I had to tell her, too. I was like... I was like, babe, whenever I tell you to put your sunscreen on, I'm like, here's why. And so I looked him up. Like, I had to pull up a picture yeah. of the current day. So, like, everybody in the 80s was obsessed with tanning. And I was like, look this at him now. Happened. And she was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I love how every movie's a lesson. It's a lesson. But then, then she was, oh, God, when the Spaniard came on, she was just like. Oh, I don't understand. Man. None of us did. It's I was okay. like, look, he's got one pearl earl. He doesn't have two pearl earrings. He's, he's got, got one peacock pearl earring. feather fucking. <laughs> and she was like, oh my god, they're peacocks. I'm like, well, maybe they just collected the ones that they shed naturally. I mean, like the ones I have. Uh, anyway, it was hilarious. Oh <laughs> it, it really made me. It made me realize like how, how much has changed. changed. Uh, oh, okay. So anyway, anyway, anyway. <laughs> Uh, I think everybody has their own examples of terrible sequels readily to hand, so we don't need to go too far into those. Unless you have any examples off the top of your head. No. I didn't uh, have there's time a lot to of think. them that are bad. Um, but I feel like it's usually either a terrible change in the cast or director or creative differences or whatever reason, or it's just a lame attempt to cash in on a successful first movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, the best sequels always keep the heart. Yeah. And tell a And it doesn't story. feel like they tried so hard. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's just. It goes with the flow. Yeah, they're still telling a good story. And of course, George of the Jungle 2 kept the heart, but it oh, didn't have I a strong a good story. One. Okay. <clears throat> the second Matrix. Oh, oh it was yeah. so bad. There's a few cool parts. Yeah. Like the intro when Trinity comes in and she does, the, she, the bike goes off the thing and she does a flip off of it and then mm-hmm. she does a scorpion kick. That part's awesome. The rest of it was kind of They boring. did a whole sequence in CGI. Yeah. Of... Fucking computer Neo uh-huh. fighting computer Mr. Smith yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And like yeah. it. I'm not sure about that. Sorry, my Alexa picked up on that. Sorry. Yeah. But it was just, it was so bad. I remember sitting in the movie theater being like, no, they didn't. Yeah. Like, you know, they had a humongous budget. Yeah, like, they you did. couldn't have thrown a little bit of reel in there. You made a whole sequence in CGI. I know. And it was so blatantly. CGI. Yeah. Like, there was no... Well, it, that was the dawn of CGI. So, I mean... It was awful. It was... Even for the time. Like, I mean... It was wa- too soon. We've gone back and we watched Blade, and, like, some of that CGI is terrible, but we yeah. can forgive it because it was, like, the beginning of it. But The Matrix is really kind of what ushered that in. Like, The Matrix and Lord of the Rings is really the two movies that stand out to me as ushering in the new yeah. era of CGI. And Lord of the Rings did a fantastic job. That shit still holds up today. Yeah. Yeah. Matrix dropped the ball in the second one. You're so right. So bad. It, because they, they they relied on it too much. Yeah. Like, the, the first one, it was when they needed it kind yeah. of thing. Like, yeah. when you just like, okay, we can't, there's no real way to do this. Like, we're good. Yeah. And that's one thing that I, I like about the Underworld movies. Yeah, Is yeah. that they used, like, for the werewolves, they used a lot of, like, the puppet things. Like, they made, and mm-hmm. when they could have easily... Yeah, and, and I remember watching an interview where they're like, we easily could have just CGI'd all of this, but we wanted it to look yeah. real. Like, we wanted it... But you can tell it's like a little puppet thing, but it's not... It's better than CGI, right? Right, yeah, yeah. And so it's like, you can you can tell those kinds of things. Like, they fucking cared. Yeah. Well, that's what I was telling my daughter. <coughs> I was telling her, because we were watching... <laughs> We're watching that first scene in Highlander where they're fighting in the parking garage. Yeah. And all of the cars were going crazy and stuff because of all the magical electricity. Oh, the magic! And I was telling her, I was like, isn't it? Because she's going to a fine arts school. She's starting next year. 
knock on wood. Yay. And um, I was like, well, wouldn't it be so cool? Because art is her thing. And I was like, it would be so cool to be like a practical effects manager on yeah. a movie because you get to blow up so much shit yeah. and like, rig stuff to do all this crazy stuff. And she was like, that would be awesome. And I was like, oh my if God. there's a like, bring your mom to work day, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm coming me. even if there isn't one. Because that, that shit, I would... Oh, I'll come bring you lunch. I'll bring everyone lunch. Shit. If I get to walk yeah. in and see some of this yeah. stuff. Oh, my uh, God. So, my, I think, I'm not going to say the worst mm-hmm. sequel for me, but I think that the, the sequel that disappointed me the most, speaking of Keanu, was Speed 2. I never, I don't think I ever saw Speed 2. It, it's not really worth watching. I mean, I loved mm-hmm. Speed so much. much like this yeah. is back in the blockbuster days and so we went to blockbuster and i convinced my parents to rent it somehow even though it was rated r i don't know how mm-hmm. i did it but i did and i just i, I had it on like fucking repeat like yeah. you do with your your um spotify nowadays mm-hmm. like i had it on repeat i watched it all weekend because i think we had gotten on a friday so you could get it for the whole weekend at yeah that time i watched it constantly as much as i could because i knew we had to take it back and i wouldn't be able to watch it anymore because yeah. this was back in the day yeah and then I got really excited when they said that Speed 2 was coming out. You know, again, this is back in the day, so trailers were not available at the touch of the Like, you just had to watch it when it came up, and then you had to wait. So I don't even know if I had seen a trailer, but I saw Speed 2, Cruise Control, and I was like, hell yes. And so I rented it. Keanu's not in the fucking movie. Mm. And the only thing tying that movie together, the first movie, was Keanu. Yeah. If it had been anybody else, that movie would have just... The ridiculousness would have been overpowering. Yeah. But, like, he really brought it home. Yeah. And so I remember being just devastated. And they, they had... Um, and he made the right decision. Because it wouldn't have been a good movie even yeah. if he'd been in it. But um, I remember watching the whole thing. And I hated the male lead because it wasn't Keanu. And I felt like Sandra Bullock had cheated on him. Right. Because they explained it in the beginning, like oh, well, you know, he was a cop and I just couldn't get with that lifestyle and stuff and so she was with this new guy and it turns out somehow he had been hiding the fact that he was a cop from her this whole time wow. and so she was like, oh my god I can't believe you're a cop and he's like someone hijacked the boat and she's like ah, again! <laughs> I knew I shouldn't date cops and I was just watching it like oh my god, what the fuck? <laughs> I just thought of another fantastic uh, sequel yes Predator. <gasps> yes. The second one. Oh. oh my god, it's so good. I have a huge soft spot in my heart for Danny Glover. Period. Oh, yeah. But, like, that was really good. Like, they remade that movie. Like, they really. It, it didn't even feel it. like a sequel. It was more no. like just a another Predator movie. Another Predator movie. Yeah. And it was so different, and it was the same. And they're in the city city. They're in the city, yeah. They're all sweaty and gross. Everything's going to shit. It's dirty. I love dirty. I love dirty. Everyone's like, the the good cops are actually pretty bad cops, and then, like, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's just... Do I judge my movie preferences based on sweatiness? Oh, my God. Is that why I like Westerns so much? It's like a reality check. Like, we sweat. I love Rocky. I love it. I will die for Rocky mm. and they're so fucking sweaty in that movie. Yeah. Is that what it is? I think there's a realness to it. Huh. I enjoy seeing people sweat and not like the oh you can tell somebody just sprayed a spray bottle yeah. because your hair is perfect but your face is sweaty. Like yeah. no they're nasty. Yeah. There's a grittiness. You like grittiness. I really do. <clears throat> yeah. I like dirty shit. But like I, I saw I don't know if it's through my Amazon or I through stars. I don't mean that sexually. She never does. I mean it literally. But <laughs> I like dirty shit. You just said literally, and you just said dirty shit. So oh, can there's we a lot of horse take... poop in, in Western, <laughs> so it's fine. It's dance. It's fine. I'll leave it's it. It's fine. But yeah, Predator 2, I, I don't know if it was through my stars or if it was through... I need to cancel the stars. I don't know if it was through stars or through Amazon, but I saw Predator 2 was there, and I was like, oh shit, yes. it's fucking on. Yeah. So excited. So excited. Those two movies, they're like two separate movies. Yeah. So fucking good. They're really good. Rocky 2 was disappointing, even though Mr. T was in it. Sorry. No, was Mr. T in that? No, Mr. T was Rocky 3. I don't know. You're the Rocky person. Rocky I, I like the one with the Russian guy. That's Rocky 4. Loved it. Yeah, that was good. Rocky 5 was a piece of shit. Should never have been made. I can't believe they did that to him. Ugh. Ugh. Well, it was about his son. Like, his son was a little piece of shit teenager. Like, Rocky had lost all of his money. Because, you know, mm. remember Rocky 4, he was pretty wealthy. Because yeah. he had been winning all those fights and stuff. Rocky 5 was like, they're living in a fucking basement apartment because he lost all of his money. I can't remember how now. 
and like his son was a shitty little piece of shit and um like talked back to his mom and all this shit and was always going off and getting in trouble and it was just like the worst possible ending for rocky yeah that i can imagine better i I mean like and i'm glad that they came out with creed because at least apollo's son wasn't a piece of shit you know Mm. like somebody came out of that looking good Mm. but uh rocky 2 was not great because that was his rematch against um apollo creed and at least in that movie like their friendship was formed so that was the redeeming quality of it. But overall, it was fine. It yeah. was fine. It's really Rocky and Rocky Four that are the good ones out of that franchise. Yeah. But, like, I was thinking about it, like, Lord of the Rings, like, all three of those movies hold up really well. Like, I have my preferences, but they're mm-hmm. all good movies. It depends on my mood. Like, because yeah. I, can, I can be like, oh, I want to fall asleep to this one. Which I haven't had to fall asleep to a Lord of the Rings movie in a while. But I anyway. Wanna, I don't worry about that. <laughs> and then, like, um... But, like, none of them, you don't avoid them like the play. Yeah. Like, just because they're bad. You know, watch you know what I avoid like the play? Mm-hmm. The first three Star Wars. Mm. You're talking about... I hate... You're not talking about chronology. Hayden. You're talking about the order of production. I'm talking about one, two, and three. I'm talking yes, about... Okay. Yeah. yeah. The Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. yeah. I watched them maybe... I think I've watched each of them twice, once. Twice, yeah. maybe. I think once is for me. And I just, I can't, I can't fucking do it. I really... Don't like him. I love what's her face. Yeah, Padme. Padme. Yeah, I love Padme, but I hate Hayden Christensen or whatever. Is yeah, it? yeah. Hate. Little bitch. Loathe. Like you thought, fucking Luke Skywalker was whiny in New Hope. You de- you had no idea. Well, we know where until he gets you fucking <laughs> until fucking Anakin comes up, mm. and it, it's just it's not good. They were so political. It was like being in a fucking town hall meeting. Yeah. Like, I remember, I think it was the second one. It was mm. just 100% them arguing in a council. Yeah. That's all I remember from it. Like, the first one, I remember their little, like, race in the dunes or whatever with mm. the little weird thingies. The second one, all I remember is the fucking town council meetings. And the third one, all I can remember is, um, uh, I can't remember his actual name now in the movie, but Samuel L. Jackson. Like that oh yeah, fun. um, oh uh, fuck, it's gone. I, it's See, I haven't watched it. I haven't watched him. I don't. Yeah. I don't have these things like ingrained yeah. in me like the other movies. I did like. I thought that um, <coughs> you and McGregor did a good job as a young Obi Wan Kenobi. So, yeah, he. That was the only shining light. Yeah, and no, no, no. And there was also um, Qui Gon Jinn was good. Yeah. Uh, what's his face? Liam Neeson. He Liam did a good Neeson. job as Qui Gon Jinn. They but were that's the it. only shining lights. Yep, that's it. Honestly, because it was it was enjoyable to watch them. Yeah. Anything else was just even even younger Yoda. I was like, I don't fucking care. When they had that fight scene when he was moving all crazy and uh-huh. like jumping around, it was all CGI. Of course, it's all yeah. CGI. It was like you went too much. Like yeah. it was great to see Yoda fight, but it was <coughs> almost Sorry, better throat. to have like the mystery of him. Yeah, it was. And, yeah. I don't know. And I feel like the way they showed the fighting to us was just not I don't yeah. know I, it didn't sit right with me like I was like oh that was cool I think it would have been cool if it would have been like a fan made fucking YouTube video that lasted five minutes long that was like this is how I think Yoda would fight yeah and showed us and be like that was fucking cool to watch and then you move on with your life well yeah and, and I, I had a, that's why I had there was a lot of online excitement and also trepidation about the the rebooting of the franchise and I as always I always keep an open mind because people can get influenced very easily by what they read first on the internet. So if you think this movie is going to be a piece of shit, you're going to watch it and you're already going to be all the yeah. parts that are pieces of shit, which every movie has shitty parts. And if the same as the Hobbit, like if everything gets hyped up too much, like you go and you have huge expectations and then you get disappointed. So I always go in expecting to enjoy myself yeah. and nothing more. And then I make my decision based on that. But yeah, I didn't watch on any of the new the the um Seven, eight, and nine. Yeah. I didn't read yeah, me any I didn't either. forums. I didn't. I only watched the trailers. I didn't watch any other stuff. I wanted to make my own yeah, same. decisions. Same with me. I, yeah. and I was. I liked them. I liked all. Yeah, of, I, liked I enjoyed Rogue them. One. Okay. I liked all of them. I loved the, Man- the Mandalorian. Like I had a great time. Mm-hmm. Sorry to finish Bob. But um, I lost my train. I lost my train. But I also didn't... I wasn't somebody who read the books. I wasn't on canon. I wasn't... I didn't... Oh, now I don't give a shit about that stuff. <coughs> any of that stuff. I didn't I mean, do that's any of that stuff. It's like dessert. It's all extra. Yeah. I don't have time for that anyway. <laughs> yeah. And I know there's like a character that everybody was hoping would come about that didn't... 
I can't remember what his name was, but like... Well, everybody was hoping that, um... Well, okay, maybe we're thinking of something different, but they were originally going to make a movie about Boba Fett. Yeah. And they ended up not. And so then they announced The Mandalorian, and I was like, oh my god, is it Boba Fett? And they're like, mm. it's not. And I was like, fuck! But, but I still liked it. so good. So good. So good. I still, I love Boba Fett, but it's almost like the Yoda thing where I'm like, is he better in my imagination? Than he would be yeah. if someone tried to bring him to life. <laughs> well, he was so mysterious and everything yeah. like that. And then the first three, they tried to bring in, like, Boba Fett. Like, you saw him without his fucking... Like, where yeah. his origin was. Like, his dad got killed and blah, blah, blah. I don't even count that. But, I mean, it, yeah, it, but it didn't feel right to no, me. No, it didn't feel right. Yeah. And, I mean, I, just, I don't know. Like, I don't care. If he really did die in the Sarlacc pit, fine. But there's some stuff in between that you could still make a pretty decent movie about. Yeah. Uh, I mean, any way you want to do it. I mean, Disney has magic, so they can figure yeah. something out. <clears throat> but yeah, I think they did good with Mandalorian. I think, I think so they too. did good, like, okay, we're not going to... Which they talked about, like, oh, are they going to bring Boba Fett into it? Like, are they going to, oh, I don't know. I mean... That'd be cool, I'm but... I'm looking for it, but I also don't know... This is before... It was af... It's before... The it's Empire's between been the abandoned. first three and the last... And the six... I think it's between one through three, three four, and five. four, five, and six. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's not. after four, five, and six. It's right after four, five, and six, right? I think it's right after four, five, okay. and six. Yeah. So there's. I it's mean, after six. <laughs> so he's so already dead. Yeah, because the empire yeah. has been disbanded, but they have like they still have stormtroopers and stuff because they're trying to bring them. Yeah. Back well, up. I'm saying I'm putting it in air quotes. He's already dead because yeah. people are still speculating whether he really died in the Sarlacc pit or not. Yeah. But I mean, I'm fine with it. I really love Pedro Pascal. I think he's great. Yeah. Uh, I will always watch more of him. I was devastated when he died in Game of Thrones. Oh my god, he was so good. Oh, so good. So good. He was just that wonderful character. Like, the character you love. Yeah. But Game of Thrones is so good at killing off characters you love. Ugh. I'm glad that roller coaster is over, even as much as I miss it. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know uh, exactly what you mean. Yeah. It's like, now what do I, like, what do I dive what into? What do I do? I'm gonna just... What do I do? I guess I'm just gonna restart the Golden Girls again. Or whatever. <laughs> All right, so All should right. we move on? Okay, so, yes, now. Mm. Mm. George of the Jungle 2 kept the heart, but didn't have a strong enough story. That is my opinion. Yeah. Okay, so why do any sequels ever get made, you ask? Mm. Well, Did I ask that? Okay. <laughs> you asked earlier today. <laughs> um, aside from situations where there are books or comic books to draw additional stories from, my assumption is that it's usually about money. I was going to say money. Um, if a movie made money, a movie studio probably figures it's a safe bet... Um, than just making an, the, that another movie just like it will also make money despite uh, decades of evidence of the country. Yeah, yeah. Um, Gosh, I, it's like, yeah. Well, I found an article from 2003, which is when this movie came out, mm -hmm. um, that talks specifically about George of the Jungle 2 as it was relevant that year. Um, and it's basically what happened. It was about money. Uh, George of the Jungle was a huge moneymaker, not only when it was in the theaters, but also when it went to video. Because back in the day, you had to buy I movies. Any, yeah. You couldn't just stream things. Um, uh, so they, Disney wanted to keep that train rolling. Unfortunately for them, they didn't make sequeling a part of Fraser's original contract. Uh. So he wasn't obligated to return for a sequel. And this article, which has no citations, mind you, so take this out <laughs> with a grain of salt, says that it wasn't, it wasn't actually a prior obligation that made Fraser decline, but instead he didn't want to undergo the insane process of getting back in that shape. Yeah. And also, he wasn't keen to keep getting injured constantly again like he had yeah, in the first, first one. Um, according to this article that does not cite sources, <laughs> Fraser offered to do a cameo for the beginning of the movie that would put him in a fat suit and uh. show that he wasn't equipped to wear the loincloth anymore, and then he would be lured off screen by a trail of donuts, <laughs> and the Christopher Showerman would, would then pop out. tag in. Um, at the very end of the movie, the normally fit Fraser would run back saying he's ready now, but oops, the movie's already finished. Yeah. Um, Disney did not want to go this route, however, as it seems incredibly insensitive, and the film industry was already under fire for Shallow Hal. Oh, Shallow Hal. Yes. Now, if anyone hasn't seen Shallow Hal, Gwyneth Paltrow puts on a fat suit, and not just a fat suit, a fat suit. Yeah. To play her character. Um, Jack Black, whose character is a terrible person, has a spell put on him by Tony Robbins <laughs> that did not age well. No, <laughs> no. Uh, so that he can only see inner beauty. So he's confused the whole movie because Gwyneth is breaking chairs and people are saying mean things about her and her clothes look a lot bigger when she takes them off. But when he looks at her, he sees Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah. Um, now the NAFA, which is the... <sighs> I'll get to that. 
Okay. The NAFA gave 20th Century Fox hell for this movie, I'm told. There is a great example. It's a great example of ignorance on my part. I, mm. when I first watched Shallow Hell, I thought I had a great message that you yeah. should look past someone's appearance and be kind to everyone no matter what they look like. Mm-hmm. I did think it was kind of weird that Jack Black is who they picked to play a conceited shallow asshole, but he's, a comedic, just... he's a comedic actor and it was a comedy. Yeah. So I just, again, I've suspended my disbelief for less. Yeah. Um, but apparently I was wrong. Mm. Um, the Since Rosemary, who is Paltrow's character, is saddled with a lot of fat joke content, mm-hmm. um, the National Association for the Advancement of Fat Acceptance, that's what NAFA is. Why did I not even know about that? Uh, I don't know. Called for a boycott. They called for a boycott. Yeah. Um, I hadn't thought that deeply about it since fat jokes are such an ingrained part of our culture. My subconscious didn't even ding on those, especially in 2003. Yeah. Um, and in retrospect... Most of they the movie do a was a lot of jokes. like stereotypes, exactly. like when she's yeah. eating a bunch. And well, she like, eats you know. like a whole cake, like she just yeah. tears hunks of it off. And there's one part they cite where, like, she jumps, she cannonballs into the pool, and like a little boy gets shot up into a tree. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's like it's very yeah. Mm. I can see that, but that like just played into the whole thing, like he, him not realizing yeah. how big she was, kind of thing. So the whole movie was kind of made up of fat jokes, but the parts that weren't fat jokes were actually really good. Yeah. Um, I mean, Rosemary doesn't end up magically skinny at the end of the movie, and Jack Black genuinely loves her and has learned not to be superficial, and some of the women who he normally would have pursued suddenly looked as ugly on the outside as they were on the inside. Yeah. So it wasn't... It so it was like go, a lesson. Yeah, it went yeah. both ways. Um, I think the problem is that fatness itself, itself was... Still the butt of the joke. Yeah. Even as we were being told we shouldn't judge fat people. Yeah. And there's a good article in the Chicago Tribune from 2001 about the movie. And the author agrees that it's a problematic movie, but also states that it should have opened up a dialogue about how women's bodies are judged far more harshly than men's. Yeah, because it's Jack Black. Like... Yeah. And compares the way women's bodies are talked about to the way ranchers judge horse flesh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, I tried to find the original NAFA press release to see what they listed specifically as their issues but their website's tab for the press release archive is a dead link mm. so i mean you can peruse their materials on nafa online if you're interested though mm. i mean why not why not okay so back to the sequel stuff back to the sequel stuff uh, so um fraser and the producers couldn't come to an agreement on a way to pass the baton to showerman so the whole idea just kind of got nixed yeah and they took care of it by using the narrator to address the change as i said before Mm. Um, and here's where the sordid history of sequels takes a classic turn (laughs) since fraser wasn't going to be attached to the film anymore the studio wasn't going to give them as big of a budget once one Mm. thing falls apart everything just kind of goes downhill with a smaller budget the movie went from a theatrical release to a straight to video movie Mm. then they made more budget cuts because who wants to spend that much on a straight to video release right so they ended up shooting in the much cheaper australia instead of hawaii which is why you noticed the backdrops and everything look a lot shittier yeah because they were in a completely different place Mm. so that is why this sequel sucks yeah it's all brandon fraser's fault but we still love him. He tried to work with he them. He tried. It didn't work out. He thought he was doing a better movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Which turned thing. out to not be the case. Uh, so, <laughs> why don't we do a where did they come from, where did they go? Oh. So, for our new George, um, Christopher Showerman, uh, he's not a household name, but he's worked pretty steadily over the last 20 years with smaller roles here and there. Yeah. Eh. Yeah. Eh. Fine. I mean, he's probably made himself a nice living. Didn't make yeah. Brad Pitt famous, but it's okay. It's okay. Our new Ursula, Julie Benz. Uh, we knew her before as Darla from Buffy and Angel. Yeah. And then as Rita on Dexter. And she's had bigger roles and some other stuff as well. I think she was in Desperate Housewives, but I never watched that, so I don't know. I think so, yeah. Um, Thomas Hayden Church. I love him. Mm-hmm. I used to watch Wings when I was younger. And oh, every time he, I know, Every time he pops up in something, I get happy. Like, hey. Yeah. Ah, I remember you. Um, our new Beatrice... Ursula's mom is mm-hmm. Christina Pickles. First of all, her name is ridiculous. <laughs> she sounds like the mom from Rugrats. Oh, yeah. Because one of their last names was Pickles. Yeah. Um, however, she's been on a lot of stuff. Yeah. She was on most popular TV shows in the 90s at least once, including Roseanne, Family Ties, Who's the Boss, Matlock, Murder, She, she Wrote, Sybil, etc. Yeah. yeah. Um, and she was also in Legends of the Fall, Romeo and Juliet, the one with Claire Danes and Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, okay. 
the wedding singer, and she was the sorceress of Castle Grayskull in the 1987 film Masters of the Universe. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So she's been a few things. Right, um, I thought that she would be the least interesting of the cast, and look how wrong I was. Look at it. She's yeah. got like the whole... Yeah. Okay, so now our little baby, Ursula and George's baby, was played by Angus T. Jones, who you might recognize as the kid from Two and a Half Men. No, I, don't, I never watched Two and a Half Men. Okay, it was fine. Um, <laughs> I mean, it was on TV for, like, a lot of people really loved it. It was on TV for a long time, but yeah. I, I never watched it religiously. I'd pop in here and there, like, when they were playing reruns and stuff on TV and I had nothing else to do, or I was procrastinating on doing something I was yeah. supposed to be doing, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That kind of thing? No, that's not yeah. typical. I feel for this poor kid... Uh, we all know it's hard to be a child actor, uh, but until we perfect small androids to do this work, we're stuck with knowing that we're fucking up tiny humans yeah. for sport. Um, now, this kid ends up making $7.8 million in his last two seasons on the show alone. Wow. So, guess who's gonna come sniffing around? Religion! Oh, God. Yeah, that's right. So, shortly uh, after he turned 18, and after his character had been doing some more adult things on the show... Jones announced that he'd been baptized as Seventh Day Adventist. Oh God! And said the show was filth and people should stop watching it. Oh wow! So a few years later, thank you for all this money. Bye. Yeah. So a few, yeah, exactly. A few years later, uh, it seems like he has left the church and he went on to college, majoring in Jewish studies. Okay. Um, which isn't really a huge departure from Seventh Day Adventism, since uh. a lot of their roots are from the Jewish culture. But mm-hmm. who knows? And then he made a statement about stepping away from, quote-unquote, organizational business model programs of religion. I couldn't find any information on whether the church managed to bilk a bunch of money from him. Yeah. Well, they still had him on the hook or not. Yeah. Um, but he grew a really crazy beard at one point. I think that's gone. <laughs> um, and then a- apparently now he's got a real Entertainment 720 situation going on with Puff Daddy's son. If oh. you remember, Entertainment 720 was um, Tom Haverford and John Ralphio's uh, business venture in Parks and Recreation. Okay. They have the same kind of thing. They do event planning. It's called Tonight, with Tonight purposely misspelled, so it's T-O-N-I-T-E. Oh. With, I can't remember his name, but Puff Daddy's son. Okay. That's who he's with now. It sounds bizarre. Okay. That poor fucking kid. I That's don't... Like yeah, he got... He got... He yeah. got shafted. Okay. So, we, we can move on to more lighthearted fare. <laughs> oh my god. Um, <laughs> would you live in a treehouse? If it had all the amenities. You know? Okay, mm-hmm. so I would definitely live in a treehouse because the best part of a treehouse is that rope ladder you can pull up, which keeps oh. anyone else from getting up there with you. <laughs> it sounds like paradise. True, true. Um, I started looking into whether treehouse living would be plausible, and it was not as interesting a question as I thought it would be. I've seen so many awesome, like, rentals, though, of, mm-hmm. like, treehouse things, and they look amazing. Well, it turns out they're kind of like tiny houses on the fringe, but definitely attainable. Yeah pretty easily and they can get very fancy and much nicer than my house right right you can have a tree house built with electricity and indoor plumbing even that's what i'm saying the amenity but for me like if you're going to do all that what's the point because i'm in a tree okay but I'm in a tree house and i don't want to go down a rope if i have to shit i would think the charm of a tree house would be the isolation and removal of distractions but with shelter and maybe a nice futon for naps mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I also oh, like I, a little swing thing, like you're way above. Yeah. Like I would do. I would enjoy that. Also, I could stash all my secret treasures up there and like all spy on unsuspecting passers. I've always wanted a hatch in the floor. Yes. Yeah, it has to have a hatch in the floor. Like it can't just be open. There has to be a hatch in the floor yeah. that I can open up and like look down upon. It's, the, it's glorious. The somethings. I think I would go for a Moroccan style look. Oh. With pillows everywhere and lovely patterned fabrics draped The white over. pillows that never get stained yeah. and just look nice yeah. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I could coax some fragrant plants to live in there I with me. I need some flowy curtains mm-hmm. that somehow magically don't get in my way, but just yeah. flow right yeah. where they're supposed to. And they don't rot with the sun and rain. Yeah. Somehow. Like, it's got, like, yeah, the whole open thing where there's, like, no windows, mm-hmm. but somehow I'm not getting mm-hmm. eaten by bugs. And when the boughs shake and the wind whispers through the leaves, my tree friend will bend her branches down and share the secrets of the sky with me. See, wow. also there would probably be drugs and booze up there too. Yeah, oh, so many, <laughs> so many. Which would be dangerous because you're up in a fucking tree. But. Yeah, well, I mean, but for me, having a tree house that's no, basically exactly like a regular house, that doesn't yeah. hold any charm for me. 
Mm. Like the way that they have it up there, like yeah, you probably. I have think to... it's the same thing. Like uh, like a Hobbit. Uh, if I had a Hobbit place, I wouldn't want there to be like a toilet. Like I wouldn't feel right about it, that being in a Hobbit hole. Uh, there's gotta be know. some kind of system that makes but sense. The kitchen would be amazing. Yeah, I wouldn't have a kitchen in a tree house. No. I would probably just try to eat a lot of fruit. Um, that you can pick right off the branch. Yeah. Yeah, so but then a fruit like a, tree would be horrible. Like a pear tree, maybe. I don't know. I feel like a fruit tree would be bugs. Yeah. And then that like fruit falls off and you. But it then rots the bugs go then, down to the rotten fruit because it's they'll get drunk. No, no. I feel right? like they'll breed and fuck in the rotten fruit and then bring it all up to me. So how about, I was going to leave the other day. I can't remember what for. Did I come over here for anything? When? I don't know. What day are you talking about? What the hell did I leave? The, oh, oh, oh. Oh, okay. oh, there's horses again. Except it's Lyle and he looks like a fucking idiot. <laughs> His hair um, is really poofy though. Oh, is he trying to like purposely <coughs> recreate the thing? Yeah. Uh, what an idiot. Horses are my friend, kind of. Um... What was I saying? Oh. <laughs> so stiff. I was going to go leave the other day and pick up my Walmart order. Mm-hmm. And, like, my husband called me, like, right when I got in the car. So I just sat there for a minute and was talking to him. And, like, there was two dragonflies mating. Yeah. Like, right in front of my windshield. And then it landed on my car. And I swear to God, one of them was looking me straight <laughs> in the fucking eyes. I was like, ah! That's what I've, I've caught. Ah! I didn't know flies fucked. Yeah. I had no idea until they were fucking on my porch. Yeah. And then lizards. Yep. Uh, like, I didn't know. And, like, they wrap their tail around and shit. I was oh, like, like oh. Snakes. Yeah, like, they wrap their tail. And I was, like, watching them. And I'm like, oh, my God. You freak. Are you okay? Like, I, this doesn't look right. I went outside the other night to take the dog out. And um, I looked up. And on the roof of my porch, there was a lizard. And it was like, ah. <laughs> Like, he saw me looking at him. He just froze. Yeah. Like, she won't see me if I don't move. And I was like, aw. And then, like, I was watching the dog and stuff, and I looked up a couple minutes later, and he had, like, moved a little bit, but when I looked up again, he's like, stop. Ah. <laughs> it was cute. I love lizards. Like, I have, like, the you typical those green bugs, baby. ones. The typical green ones that do the, like, bulgy throat thing. Yeah. Typical ones, and then there's the brown ones. And then there's these really awesome black ones that have a blue stripe down their mm-hmm. back. They're so cool looking. I like lizards. Just don't crawl on me. Or jump at me. Or when they get on my umbrella and I can see their little silhouette and they're like, boom, boom, and then they make little scattering noises. It's adorable. Just, I don't want to hold you. I think they eat bugs. Oh. So. I want to, like, um, my friend, she lives in Nevada and she got, like, this little cup. It looks like the cup that you get, like, popcorn chicken in at Walmart. Like, one of those little cups. And she opened it. It was little baby praying mantises. No. Like, little baby ones. And they're like, oh, for bugs. And I'm like, can I get that? Like, can I have I have a jungle out here. Yeah. Like, can I just get them and let them go and let them eat everything? Can I put some in the house? I know. Like, they're so cool. I have a lot of spiders. Which I'm not, I mean, if I see a spider, I'll probably go ahead and, like, smash it. But, like, I'm, in theory, I'm fine with spiders being in my house because, again, they eat bugs. Yeah. And they, like, I, I read this article one time where they're like, are you kidding? Like, spiders are horrified of your huge, breathing, loud face. <laughs> and I was like, well, that makes me feel a little What was better. that one thing? It's like, what if, what if that spider thinks that you're roommates? <laughs> and then you come in and kill him. And he's like, what that happened, bro? Man. Like, I've been eating these bugs. Like, I thought we were cool. And that's like, there's, um like, the weird bugs that I get come in waves. Like the, how do you say it? Cincadas? Cinc- uh, cicadas. Cicadas. They've been, ha- like, right by my spot. They've yeah. been hatching. Like, I have a picture on my phone of this morning. Like, it had just come out of its little, like, yeah. husk or whatever you want to call that. And it's just chilling there. So I'm like, you're a baby. Yeah. <laughs> like, welcome to the world. Don't get And eaten. then I'll get, then I've been getting a bunch of centipedes or millipedes. Oh. I don't know what they're, I put, thank God I put my flip flops on. <sighs> I went out to smoke a cigarette late. I'm not as keen on those. I think last night. And I stepped out and I heard crunch. Blech. And I'm like, I stepped on something. I stepped on something. I turned the light on, and it was a milli. I don't know the difference between a centipede and a millipede. I know it's the I don't know either. their feet, or like how many little. Well, I read whatever. something that centipedes don't actually have a hundred feet, so I don't. I don't know what the fucking difference. Is. I don't know. It, I it was think one of those. One is venomous, and one is not. Yeah, one stings when it, yeah. if it walks across you or something. Yeah. I don't. know. Well, whatever this one was, it's squished on my deck right now because I stepped on it. Well, you know what? Good on you. You saved yourself. <laughs> but it was such a hard crunch. Like it was seriously such... It was crunch. That's disgusting. And I was, like, disgusted by the action. 
You want to like leave your flip flops outside? Yeah, like until... I didn't even want to. I didn't even want to move. Uh, like I, I want to step off of it, and I just wanted it to not have happened. That's gross. Well, you know what? I hope that our YouTube um, watcher, listener, I guess it'd still be a listener. There's nothing to watch on the videos except for our uh, what do you call it? What's the thing called? Videos? Logo. <laughs> like our video. <laughs> Our logo. I hope that he, um, that person enjoyed this episode. Because it's, it's... It was it was fine. Just having this in the background, I'm just kind of like... See, just, he doesn't do goofy no, like Brendan Fraser, There's though. nobody like Brendan Fraser. Did yeah. you watch... He was in... It was uh, It was actually... You know, I don't go for dramas. I mm-hmm. usually prefer comedies or mm-hmm. pirate shows or Who's westerns. Who's the Cena-looking chick? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't get that far into it. Sorry. Um... I think those are some of the people that uh, Lyle hire, hired as goons oh. to fuck him up. But um, I was watching... I watched this miniseries. It was 10 episodes. I think it was on HBO. And it was... The only reason I watched it is because Brendan Fraser was in it. And it was like the first thing he's done in a long time. Oh, where he's got the big mask on and stuff. I've seen trailers for it. Uh, he doesn't have a mask. He's um, He's got a hat. Like a cowboy hat. Oh no, this is something else. There's some new thing coming out. It's like these superhero kind of misfit things. And he's in it. And it's supposed no. to come out on HBO. This and is like, from a couple while. years ago. It was oh. called... Fuck! It was called Fuck? No, what was it called? I can't remember now. It was like a one word title. But it was basically about the kidnapping of this like rich little shit. Um, mm. Like in the 70s. He was... Uh, uh, God, what is his name? Fuck! It was a famous like... Um, uh, oil baron mm. or newspaper baron some kind of baron like from the 70s where he made all his money on this one thing yeah. and he was a piece of shit and his family members were like you know kind of just with him for the money like yeah. to that they would get something from his inheritance and stuff and um, I'm going to look it up as we're talking <laughs> but Brendan Fraser was in it because he was one of the people that was hired to kind of like find this kid Yeah, when he got kidnapped it was a really good miniseries, and Brandon Fraser did an amazing job. He did still he? has it. Like, he was, he was, he somehow managed to be serious, but also be the comedic relief at the same time. Good. Like, he wasn't over the top, but he was still like, yeah, this is ridiculous, isn't it? I feel like Hollywood lost faith in him, so. Well, he got a, man, I know we talked about it in the first one, but he got such a shit, um, what do you call it? I've lost my mind. I've lost mm-hmm. my mind. Like, the hand that's dealt to you. He got such a shit deal. Yeah. Um, like, because, you know, his wife left him and took all of his fucking money. Like, he lost his hair, and everybody was making fun of him. He gained weight. Like, yeah. what else do you do when you're miserable? Like, you gain weight, and I'm sorry, you fucking age. That's just what happens to some of us. You know what I loved him in? Encino Man. Yeah, that was a good movie. I fucking love that movie. That I don't care what anybody movie. says. No, I loved it. I don't know. I don't Crash? I don't think I've heard anybody. It's 2004. No. No, that was that terrible movie with uh, Sandra... Well, not terrible. It was a hard-to-watch movie because it was all about, like, race relations and stuff like that. It was Mm. called... Back! Uh, Yeah, that one. It was about the Gettys. The Getty family. Mm. Uh, No, maybe it wasn't... uh, Trust. That was what it was called. Trust. I think it was on FX. It wasn't on HBO. But it was really good. Like, it was only ten episodes. It was kind of hard to watch. But, um... But he did a great job. He wasn't in a ton of it. Uh, but yeah, so it's in 1973. Um, what's her face? Million Dollar Baby is in it too. Hilary Swank. Mm. She's his mom. And it's all about this kid. Like, he gets into drugs and he, you know, the basic rich kid stuff. Like, yeah. he goes on this, uh, he ends up getting somebody pregnant and all. Oil. Sorry. It was oil. Uh, yeah, so the Italian mafia kidnaps him in order to get a ransom, and then his grandfather is this John Paul Getty, and he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to negotiate, Ooh. because he's that kind of guy. He's like, no, this is, it's that mob shit, it's that same fucking mob yeah. shit, like, no, I'm the biggest dick here, no one else gets to be like, But there's a kid, Nick. there's a life. Yeah, and so the, um, <clears throat> Hillary Swank is not his daughter, she's his daughter-in-law, she had, mm. she had married his husband, his son. I think they were divorced at that point. And so um, she was pleading with him, like, please, just get my baby home. I yeah. won't do anything. Because the kid's like 20 years old or something like that. He's, you know, and being a little rich kid, he has no experience with people telling him no or being mean to him. Yeah. And so that's what the whole... And so he's trying to get away from these people. And, and the whole thing is about um, John Paul 
Getty is played by Donald Sutherland, mm. who he does a he does. A I bet he does a great job. job. I love him so much. Like he's always the bad guy. I don't know if he was in his earlier career, but now at this point in his life, like he was President Snow in the Hunger Games, and then he was you know this asshole. Yeah. I've only ever seen him recently in bad guy um, roles. He's always like such a good um, um, Pride and Prejudice. Oh yes, he did so good as Mr. Dad. Mr. Bennett. Mr. Bennett. Yeah, yeah, that was good too. I forgot about that, but uh, yeah. So anyway, that was good. If you want to see like a more recent Brendan Fraser, and like he looks like he's gotten his shit together a little bit. Like he's not. Oh as... yeah, I see a picture of him. He yeah. looks good in he this looks good. Yeah, he looks good. Like he's still chunky, but he's not yeah. like he's he doesn't look as unhealthy as he did before. Yeah. Like, maybe he laid off the booze or something. I don't know. But yeah, He's like, I got a job. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm going to make it good. But maybe, like, maybe he's going to have a little comeback. But I'm trying to think of the show that I was just telling you about that. Oh, God, there's Indica here all over my fucking phone. Let's see. Brandon Frazier 2020. What is he going to be? I'm looking to. Um... Doom Patrol? Yeah. Oh, I've heard good things about that show. I have I a friend. I think it's coming out. Not a friend, an acquaintance on a study abroad trip I went to in Paris. She works on it. She's one of the, I think, costume designers. Oh. She puts up stuff on social media all the time. I will watch that. He's actually. got like he's got like a yeah. He looks like a robot mask stingy, but you hear his voice. Mm. And you're like, oh, that's Brendan Fraser. I will back. He's him. robot it, man. That guy is it? That. Him? Yeah. I will back him up until my last breath. I'm yeah, I love you. him. I, I love can't him help so it. Much. I don't care. I will take him bald, fat. I don't give a shit. I, I already said, and like, if he ever hears this, like, we got him. <laughs> we'll take care of you. We should start our fan club. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, well, I think that's it. That's our show. Okay. Do you have any final remarks on sequels? No. Okay. Okay. I mean, you know, they can be fine, but, you know, if they get derailed... For the most part. Or if they get, you know, budget cuts, then it's just going to be a shit show. Yeah, they're either going to put way too much money into it and it's going to flop, or they're going to put not enough money into it and it's going to flop. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we just uh, keep an open mind going forward. And don't take anybody else's word for it. Make your own decisions. Yes, there you go. Don't listen to the fucking internet. And everything in life. They're all stupid. Girl, okay, bye. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to leave us a review so that other cool people like you can find us and laugh at us. I mean with us. Okay, maybe at us. Visit our website, notyourmomshow.com, and click the contact link to connect with us on social media or leave us a message. We love hearing from y'all. Bye. Bye.